everybody, he's worthy. He's worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy. Come on and turn in your Bibles with me to Matthew, the 27th chapter. We're going to read verse 45 and verse 46. Now from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Father, I ask you to speak through me in Jesus' name. Amen. So we've now come to the fourth cry from the cross. We heard him cry to his father, requesting that his haters and his enemies be forgiven. This teaches us that when our enemies have done their worst, we can still forgive. And then we hear him turn to the thief, as Minister Cheryl described, the good thief the repentant thief, and he makes an appointment to meet him later that day in paradise. And then we hear him turn to his mother, and even though he had siblings as the firstborn, like Elder Jeanette said, he turns to John, and he says, this is your mother, and he tells his mom, this is your son. So even in his death, he was taking care of his mom. These three cries show us that Jesus was caring for someone else's welfare. He cared about his enemies and his haters, and he cared about the dying thief, and he cared about his mom. So now it's about midday, and darkness has covered the land for three hours. The darkness was eerie, and it was unlu unusual. And I don't know about you, but during COVID-19, as I have been out in the streets, it's been eerie seeing stores that are normally open closed and in this area having no traffic and seeing no one on the streets. It has been eerie. But I believe that the darkness of the land was an act of God and a sign of judgment. Some people argue that it was an eclipse. But it couldn't have been an eclipse because it was a full moon for Passover. So in the third hour, we hear Jesus crying in a loud voice, My God, my God, why? Why hast thou forsaken me? Jesus spoke in three language, languages, um, Hebrew, Aramaic, and the Greek. But mostly he used the Aramaic. It's amazing to me as I was studying this particular cry from the cross to see how intentional God is. And he tells us that he watches over his word to perform it, and he declares that it will not return void. I know that prophecy is popular in today's society. People are running to hear a word from prophet this and prophet that. I heard yesterday on Facebook an apostle say, where are the true prophets of God. I see you on TV, but are you warning the people? I challenge every believer to repent for depending on a word from God and a man and a prophet. Because back in the Bible days, they didn't have the written word, so they depended for God to speak through a prophet. But we have the word. And as a believer, I challenge you to get into the word of God Every prophecy that comes forth must line up with the word of God. And as believers, we don't build our lives on prophecy. We build it on the word of God. Somebody just shout, the Bible stands. The Bible stands. The Bible stands. But as I looked in Psalm, the 22nd chapter, we see how it foretells of the crucifixion story. The first verse here is the fourth cry that we hear from Jesus on the cross. It opens saying, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? So David makes a striking prophecy of the crucifixion of the Messiah 
in a time when crucifixion was not even known to exist. Verse 16 and 17 says that they have pierced my hands and my feet, and they have numbered all of my bones. And verse 18 says they divide my garments among them for my vesture, and they cast lots. He's talking about the crucifixion. So let's look at what Jesus was saying and what he was really experiencing at this time. He who had no sin took my sin and your sin and the sins of the world and it brought separation to him from his father, our father. Isaiah 59 verse 2 declares, but your iniquities have separated you from God. Your sins have hidden his face from you. His father had hidden his face from Jesus as he took on the sins of the world. It was an agonizing feeling for the one who experienced true intimacy with God was now separated from him. So many times throughout scripture, We see him sneaking off to spend time with the Father. We see him seeking strength from the Father for every task. The Father was his pipeline for victory. Is the Father your pipeline for victory? Pastor Joy described this so when she was talking about what prayer is to every believer. It's our source of strength. It's our connection with the Father. So as painful as it was, the cruelty of the cross, the beatings, the scourging, the the spitting, how humiliating it was to be spat upon, all of that pales in light of his father forsaking him. This was agony, y'all. The isolation was unbearable. It hurt him more than the nails that were in his hands and in his feet. It hurt him more than the beatings. It hurt him to feel the loneliness of not having his father. The sufferings of the cross, the physical ones, were nothing to be compared with the separation that he felt from his father. The first cry that we heard from the cross, you heard him say, Father, Father, forgive them. But now he's saying, my God, my God. And I'm sure you understand this because I know that there have been times where you didn't feel close enough to him to see him as a father. There were times that you didn't know that father-daughter relationship or times where that father-daughter relationship was broken or the father-son relationship was broken. But how many know that he is always God? He is God, the Bible says, from everlasting to everlasting, he is God. So this cry of desperation, he didn't cry out to his father. But he cried out to his God, my God, my God, why? How many times have you asked the question why? How many people are asking why right now with the current state of affairs? Why COVID-19 hit my loved one? Why my husband? Why my wife? Why my kids? Why my parents? Why is the world going through all of this? I remember growing up when I had the question why, at times I would just be told because I said so. But I tell the believer why? Because his ways are different than our ways. And his thoughts are far above our thoughts. He's a sovereign God. He's a sovereign God. I believe that he was forsaken, that we might be accepted into the beloved. Why? The truth is that his pain was not because of his sin. For the Bible said he was without sin. But he took on our sin and the sins of the world. He didn't just bear it for the present. 
but he bore it for the future. That from generation to generation, we might experience the forgiveness of the Lord. That we might enter boldly into the throne room knowing that we have full access. Why? So that we might be the light of the world. He went through darkness that we might walk in the light. Lord, I thank you. Is anybody grateful today? Come on, just lift your hands and say, Lord, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. Each one of us played a part in putting our sins on him. The songwriter said he paid a debt he did not owe, and I owed a debt. I could not pay, and he took my place, and he paid the price. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, I'm so grateful. He was forsaken that I might not be forsaken. For I hear in his word, he says, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. The father turned his face from Jesus so that he could cause his face to shine upon us and to be gracious unto us and to give us peace. So when we think about what he went through, it's no wonder that we hate sin. While we're trying to preserve our lives, he gave his life for us. He said that no man taketh my life from me, but I lay it down for myself. Forsaken is such a strong word. It means abandonment. This was a cry of desolation. This was a cry of lament. This was a cry of desperation and a cry of the rejected. Many mis misunderstood his cry. The hearers thought that he was calling on Elijah to save him. Just like many misunderstand my tears and your tears. And, and many hearers misunderstand our prayers. But though they misunderstand, I charge you to cry out to the Lord. Because it doesn't matter what the, the naysayers say. Just lift up your voice and cry out to your God. The Father turned from Christ that he might be able to turn to you. There can't be a more dreadful moment in history of the man as this moment. Jesus, who came to save us, is crucified. And he realizes the horror of what is happening and, and what he's now enduring. And he's now engulfed in the raging sea of sin. Evil triumphs. But only for a moment. The burdens of all the sins of humanity for that moment overwhelmed the humanity of our Savior. Why? This had to happen. This had to occur in order for Jesus to save us. In order for him to defeat his humanity so that the divine plan of his Father could be completed. It is by his death that we are redeemed. For there is one God. There's one mediator between God and the human race. Christ Jesus, himself human, who gave himself as a ransom for all. 1 Timothy 2, 5 and 6. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross. That we might live for righteousness. And by his wounds, we have been healed. First Peter 2 and 24. Lord, bless this to the hearts of your people. In Jesus' name.